So first we're going to have a law here called the law of one price, which basically states that the price of a good should be the same everywhere. Okay? The price of that computer that you have must be the same in Denmark, vis-a-vis -vis the same price, the price of the same good in the US. If it's not, you're going to sell, you know, you're going to buy the computer in the cheaper place and sell it in the more expensive place. And you're going to do that until the two prices equal to one another. Okay? So this is what the law of one price is. And what we're having here is that basically the relative price of, uh, of uh, the, the European good vis-a-vis -vis the, the, the price of the same good in the US must be equal to one if this law of one price holds. So you have the price in euro for a particular good times the exchange rate dollar per euro. And that gives you the number of dollars you need to pay for that particular good in euro. And then you divide that by the price of the US good in dollars. And that is your relative price of the two goods. We're not really going to look at that because we're going to think here more of a macro approach. We're not going to look at the price of a single good. We're going to look at the price of a basket of goods. As we have a low one price for a single good, we're going to have a purchasing power parity for basket of goods. So here we have the relative price of basket of goods, Europe versus US, which is the ratio between European basket of goods price expressed in dollars. So here we're taking the average, you know, the average price of coffee times the average expenditures on coffee plus average price on uh, bread times average expenditures on bread and so on and so forth. You can get creative with these averages. Multiply by the exchange rate and then divide by the US basket price. So their coffee, their expenditure share, their bread, their expenditure share on bread, and so on and so forth. Okay? So the logic here, so if, if this thing, this Q equals to one, that means that the price of the basket of goods in the US is the same as the price of the basket of goods in Europe. They both have the same purchasing power. Or if you like, a dollar has the same purchasing power in Europe and in the US because it can buy exactly the same number of goods, the same basket of goods, okay? If we believe in this purchasing power parity, we can use it to predict exchange rates. So we can see in the long run, well, when prices are just, the exchange rate between two currencies are determined by the ratio of price levels. Uh, this thing here is our monetary model that tells us what is the price level at home or in any country. Because if we rearrange it, we know that the price level in the US is the ratio between the money supply in the US and the US real GDP. And we also have this constant L bar. We ignore for a second. The same thing is true for. European price level. European price level is the ratio between the total number of euros that are in circulation divided by the number of goods that Europe produces. It's simple as that. This is actually very powerful though, because it tells us what we need to look at to figure out what's going to happen to prices. If the Federal Reserve increases the money supply, prices in the US will go up. Why? Well, if you double the amount of money that people have and the number of goods that they can buy is the same, logic dictates that prices of goods will just double overnight. You half the amount of currencies that people will have, and they still want to buy the same goods, the price of these goods will have to fall down. Vice versa, GDP, if the number of goods increases, you have the same amount of money, you can buy more goods, the price of these goods has to fall down, and vice versa. Okay, so let's bring this to our exchange rate. Because here we have a model that links monetary policy and GDP levels to exchange rates. 
Okay. So say you expect, so say that, you know, now we, what should we do? Let's say that the GDP in Europe goes up. So they're just optimistic, and right? They have the recovery fund, uh, they all spend, the GDP goes up. What's gonna happen to the exchange rate? Y of uh, Europe goes up. What's gonna happen to the price level in Europe? It goes down because same amount of money is chasing more goods. So the price of these goods must go down. If the price of the European basket of goods goes down, that means that people would like to buy more of the European basket of goods. So they demand more euros, that is the dollars. So the euro appreciates or the dollar depreciates. It goes up. 